Please welcome Arthi Vasudevan. What is the one thing we all learn from the COVID pandemic? Mindless scrolling. If you were thinking about wearing a mask, social distancing, or conserving bath tissue, those are all good answers too. But let's be honest, scrolling won the gold medal. During one such instance of mindless scrolling, I came across a post with a headline, could your child be the next hacker or get hacked? While the headline caught my attention, I remember feeling confident about my family's online engagement due to an incident a few days ago. My kids came home from an after-school camp with certificates that read digital citizen. I thought my kids were ahead of the game and had become the Avengers of cybersecurity. <laughs> but as I reread the headline, I thought to myself, is it true that kids like mine know they need to be digitally safe and ethical, or were they just really good at earning certificates? I clicked the article. It was the story of a mom whose child started hacking at the age of eight, eight years old. At that age, some of us were still trying to figure out how to color inside the lines. This gave me an epiphany that kids at that age could have varied levels of cybersecurity awareness. So our kids could be the weakest link of security in our homes. At the end of the story, there was another related article. The story of a 13-year-old girl who was kidnapped after she met someone on social media the previous week. Thankfully, the girl was later rescued by the police and the stranger she met, a 21-year-old male who had traveled from Louisiana to Texas to pick her up, was arrested. There was another story with a headline that read, cyber crimes against children had increased by over 400% in 2020 from the previous year. And this other tragic story of a 14-year-old Florida teen who took his own life after forming an emotional attachment to an AI chatbot. Having started a role in cybersecurity at the time, it became my day job to track cyber threats against electric grids. I became more aware of the dangerous ransomware gangs causing cyber warfare. That was also about the time my son got his first online gaming device and wanted to play multiplayer games with strangers on the internet. With all this going on, I was wondering how to address the news of the girl being kidnapped to my kids in a timely manner. When I thought I was perfectly ready, I had a surprise. My son came to me talking about the subject. He pointed to his device and said, Mommy, I unlocked a new level in this game, which is extremely difficult. When I asked him how he did it, guess what he said? He chatted with a stranger on the public server who showed him how to unlock the level. While I had a lot to say, I just smiled and got back to my room. There was a lot of tossing and turning that night for me. I was wondering how to explain digital safety and cyber ethics to a generation where kids spend more than 15 hours per week playing online games and at a time when the World Health Organization has recognized online gaming addiction as a mental health condition. An extra filter got turned on my mind and I started scanning for security traps for children of this age in everyday situations. I learned of the types of scammy advertisements kids and youth are exposed to in social media and in general the internet. Ads for fake IDs, fake credit cards, get rich quick schemes, and content on eating disorder and dangerous challenges. The more I read, the more I learned about the disturbing side effects of internet on kids, including low self-esteem, anxiety, ADHD, self-harm, and exposure to excessive violence 
and explicit content. I started looking around to see how much of this was really happening. I went back to an email from my child's classroom teacher from a few weeks ago. At the bottom of the email, there was a link to the teacher's web page on the school website. Anyone who had the link could view the page, not just the parents of her students. When I clicked the link, the page had another link to the teacher's social media account, which was set to public. In less than five minutes, I learned the teacher's husband's name, where he worked, her children's names, their birthdays, house number from the first day of school picture, car license plate, and even pictures of her classroom students for the whole world to see. All this involved zero coding or hacking, just good old-fashioned snooping. I was shocked to realize that let alone kids, parents and teachers need awareness of leaving digital trails on the internet. It seemed like a lot of weight on parents to teach their kids to be safe online. Sure, there are federal laws such as the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA, to protect kids 13 and under when online. COPPA requires online gaming companies and social media websites to explain their privacy policy and get parental consent before collecting and using a child's personal information. But the law does not prevent these companies from not verifying age, meaning any child could enter a false age and create an account. I decided to take action. But instead of changing the whole world, I started in my family with my kids. I created two characters after my kids, Maya and Dave, and a story in which they play a virtual reality game. The game has many levels, and in each level, I addressed a cybersecurity tip, such as password strength, personally identifiable information, or PII, types of malware, and cyberbullying. In each game level, kids see and learn these concepts by relating them to the physical world and human senses. For example, layers of security in a physical castle and human body's immune system to learn about computer worms and viruses. So slowly through Maya and Dave, my kids learn to create unique and anonymous usernames and complex pass phrases for each of their online gaming accounts. They stopped clicking on random links, giving away personal information such as name and location to an online game, or engaging with strangers online. They also learn not to access the public Wi-Fi network, especially if the firewall is disabled. When I saw that my kids were enjoying this content, I started publishing comics so more kids and parents can learn about online safety tips. A year later, I published a children's book on cybersecurity and created an interactive game for kids to test their cybersecurity knowledge. My journey of educating more than 3,500 students, parents, and teachers across the world on online safety has taught me something crucial. Protecting kids online isn't about strict rules of surveillance. It's about empowerment. While cybersecurity is not rocket science, it is a real science. It's more than common sense and it's worth investing our time and effort as parents to teach our kids to self-protect in the digital space. Additionally, by teaching our kids the importance of cyber ethics and digital empathy, we can prevent them from becoming predators and hackers. I want you to believe that this is not something that just happens to other families. It could happen to ours. And generative AI is making the possibility much higher. None of us want to look back and say, this could have been avoided. So let's start by having intentional conversation with our kids about online safety. Let's build trust by having these conversations regularly so kids can relate to the concepts of human senses and physical world and remember them easily. As parents, let's reflect on our own digital behavior. 
before posting pictures of our kids on social media or displaying birthday yard signs or honor roll stickers, let's remember that the seemingly harmless information can reveal more than we realize to the wrong eyes. Finally, let's set the example the next time we catch ourselves scrolling mindlessly, let's remember our kids are watching us. It's a beautiful, vast world out there, both online and offline. Let's help our kids explore it safely and remind them and ourselves of the richness beyond the digital realm. Together, we can create the next generation of ethical and confident digital citizens. Thank you. That was Arthi Vasudevan.